Well, I tell you what, we just finished one heck of a job on that quadratic formula, and now we're ready, finally, ready to graduate and move on to the next topic. Our topic tonight is we're going to talk about how to find the sum and the product of the roots of a quadratic equation. And so just kind of as a precursor, we want to just make a note here in our notebook that uh, you know, as a consequence of the results of the quadratic formula, let's see here, um, every, and I emphasize every single quadratic that's ever been created in math has to have how many roots? It's going to have exactly two roots, okay? And we're going to kind of peel the quadratic formula apart because you know how there's that plus or minus sign in the middle of the numerator. I'm going to peel it apart and I'm going to say, well, the first root, and I'm going to use the notation x sub 1. So you get your little subscript in there. The first root is going to be negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. Make sure your radical extends all the way across, divided by 2a. And then your second root, and I'm going to use x sub 2 as my notation, is going to be negative b minus the big radical b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so we've pulled the two roots apart. Usually we don't peel them apart like that. We just kind of smush it all together as one expression with a plus or minus sign. But I think we're going to peel them apart. It's going to help us build a very special formula here in a moment. Now, before I teach you any tricks, I want to prove that you can actually solve a lot of these problems on your own tonight if you had enough time. Now, I want you to consider the quadratic equation x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. And I want to know, could you, do you think you're capable of finding the sum of the two roots and the product of the two roots? And I think you'd feel pretty good about that. You'd say, yeah. Well, the first thing I'd do is I would actually try to find the roots themselves. I would factor this, and I'd say x plus 2, x plus 3. I would tee it up, and I would get roots of negative 2. I'd get root of negative 3. I would then say that the sum of these two roots is negative 5. I would say that the product of these two roots is positive 6. And you say, voila, I got it. Well, I'm going to teach you a quicker, more efficient technique. And that's really our big goal today. Our big goal today is to find a formula. And we're going to find a formula that will help us find the sum and the product of the two roots without actually having to find the roots themselves. Okay, So I'm, not, I'm going to be able to say that the sum is negative 5 and the product is 6 without doing any of this work right there. That's our goal tonight. Now, rather than just simply giving you the formulas, I'm gonna, we're going to kind of create them ourselves tonight. We're going to do a little discovery exercise. We're going to really put our thinking caps on, and we're going to look at something fairly strange. Now, what I've done here at the top is I've imported the notation we used earlier. We kind of peeled that quadratic formula apart. We said, here's the first root, here's the second root. And what I want you to do is I want you to find an expression for the sum and the product of the two, uh, two quadratic roots in terms of A, B, and C. All right, so let's do the sum first, and I'll see how much room I have. I, ha I may have to do the product on another slide. I'll see, see if I can squeeze it in. But they want me to take x sub 1 and add x sub 2 to it. So x sub 1 is negative b minus, and that's actually just the opposite of what I had on the earlier screen, and that's okay. It doesn't matter which one has the minus or which one has the plus. All right, and then they want me to add, so I'm going to add, and x sub 2 straight off the top of the page there is negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. All right, all over 2a. Now, as far as adding goes, what are you excited about? The first thing that I'm really excited about is that I've got the same denominator. Yeah, I'm super excited that we got these common denominators down here, so we don't have to do any of that work. We can just simply add already. We're going to combine all the like terms in my numerators. And some good things are happening there. I can combine the negative b with this negative b and get a negative 2b. And then I can combine this radical with this one over here. Now that's even better news because the first one it has a negative and the second one's got a positive. So when I combine the radicals, they cancel out. So here's what I've got. I combine the negative b's and I put it all over my common denominator. And then I canceled out the 2's. So negative b divided by a is the sum of the two roots every single time. So what started out as something really ugly became something really, really nice. All right, I'm going to slide down. I'm going to do my product down below here. And I'm just going to rewrite the two. 
So the product, I need to do x sub 1 times x sub 2. x sub 1 was negative b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Now this one's not quite as easy as the last one, but I don't know if it's any, it's not too much harder, I'll tell you that. And then we got plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right. So here's the here's what's happening. So we're going to multiply the numerators times the numerators and the denominators times the denominators. So I'll go ahead. I'll do the denominators just because it's a little easier. So 2a times 2a is 4a squared. All right. Now let's talk about the top. Now, believe it or not, this numerator right here is a binomial. You've got negative b is your first term, then you got your minus, and then the entire radical serves as the second term. And then over here, same thing, negative b is the first term, plus, and then this entire radical is the second term. Believe it or not, these rascals are conjugates of one another. So we're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to go first times first. Negative b times negative b is positive b squared. And then... Um, if I multiply these two radicals together, I'm going to get a negative, and I'm going to get the quantity b squared minus 4ac. So any radical times itself essentially kills the radical, and you're just left with the expression that was underneath it. Now let's go ahead, let's distribute the negative sign. b squared minus b squared plus 4ac. What's exciting there? What do you see that jumps off the page at you? Yeah, hopefully you notice that the b squareds are going to cancel out. So I get 4 times a times c all over 4a squared. Can this be simplified at all? Yes, the 4s can cancel. I can say the a on top kills one of the a's on the bottom. And when I'm all done, I got c divided by a. So the product of the two roots will always be c divided by a. So let's put it all together here just to make sure that we're crystal clear. We did a lot of work to, to generate those two formulas. By the time the dust settled, they were very nice, neat formulas. The sum of the two roots is going to be negative b divided by a, and that's true every single time. And the product of the two roots will be positive c divided by a, and again, that's true for every single quadratic. So let's really focus on getting our quadratics in what's called standard form. And once you get them in standard form, the sum and the product is a piece of cake. Now, all that work we just did with those to generate those formulas, we don't have to do that work ever, ever again. We've already generated the formulas, so we're going to just use them now. And uh, for this first particular equation, first of all, I've got good news because I'm going to draw a little smiley face. It's already in what's called standard form. All right, so we're good to go. I know my a value is a 2, my b value is an 8, and my c value is a negative 3. So I know that the sum of the two roots is going to be negative b divided by a, which in this case is negative 8 divided by 2, so I got a negative 4 for the sum. And then the product is going to be c divided by a, because the formula says so, and that's negative 3 divided by 2, and I can't simplify that, so I'm all done with that one. Uh, part B over here, let's see, the A value is a 5, the B value is a 2, and the C value is negative 20. So let's go ahead and plug them in. The sum is going to be negative B divided by A. That's my final answer. The product is going to be C divided by A, which in this case is going to turn out to be negative 4. So I had a sum of negative 2 fifths. I got a product of negative 4. Now, one question you may be asking, well, what are the roots? Who are the roots? And I'll tell you what, we don't have an answer to that question today. We actually don't know who the roots are, but I can promise you this. If you multiplied them together, you would get negative 4. And that's all we care about today. All right, I'm going to throw a bunch of rapid-fire practice at you tonight just because we need lots of repetition here. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice on a lot of these questions is they may not be in standard form yet. So on this first equation, I've got to set it equal to 0. Once I subtract the 7 over, I would say, yes, now it's in standard form. So the sum of the roots, I'm going to draw a little arrow just because I don't think I've got enough room in this space right in here. Uh, I'm going to say the sum is negative b divided by a, which turns out to simply be negative 3. Now the product of the two roots is going to be c divided by a, which is negative 7 divided by 1, which turns out to be negative 7. So we're all done there. This next equation, I'm not, I'm not only going to subtract the 6x over, but I'm going to put it in the proper position. I'm going to put it right as my middle term, squeeze it in the middle. Now I could say that the sum of the two roots is 
Now I gotta negate the b value, and you'll notice the b value is already negative six. So if I negate a negative six, I get positive six, divide it by a, and I get six. The product of the two roots is gonna be the c value divided by a, which turns out to be negative two. All right, we're cruising. Number three down here. Let's go 2x squared minus 5x equals 0. What I'm going to say, I'm going to say the a value is 2, the b value is negative 5, and the c value is a 0 because it's missing. There is no third term. So the sum is going to, I got to negate a negative 5, and I got to divide it by a. So 5 halves. The product is going to be c divided by a. 0 divided by 2 is simply 0. Last but not least, the good news is this next one, negative 9x squared minus 3x plus 1 is already in standard form. I'm going to say the A value is negative 9, the B value is negative 3, and the C value is positive 1. So what's the sum? Bingo. Negate your negative 3, divide it by A, and I've got negative 1 third for a simplified answer. Product, C, divided by A. And that's the best I can do. I'm going to call it negative one-ninth. So probably the biggest thing to watch out for there is rewrite them in standard form. And if your B value is already negative, then by the time you negate it, you're going to be back to positive. All right, got some more practice for you. We need more reps. A great time. I'll tell you what, this is a great time to hit that pause button and try these four problems on your own. Be a good measuring stick to tell you whether you're ready for tomorrow's class or not. So let's try, um, I'm going to rewrite this as 2x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. So I'm going to say my a value is 2, my b value is negative 1, and my c value is also negative 1. So the sum of the two roots is going to be, i got to negate the negative 1. So it actually turns out to be positive 1 divided by a, so just simply 1 half. And the product is going to be c divided by a, so i got negative 1 half. All right, let's go 4x squared minus 100. Now, which term's missing? Is it the a term, the b term, or the c term? So hopefully you said it's the b term that's missing. My a value is 4, my b value is 0, and my c term is negative 100. Don't lose your negative there. Sum of the two roots is going to be, well, negate that b, you still get 0. Divided by 4, and 0 divided by anything is 0. The product is going to be negative 100 divided by 4, which turns out to be negative 25. Squeeze it in there. All right. Let's say this. Let's say 0 equals positive 5x squared plus 3x minus 2. So what I did is I moved all the terms over to the right side, but I rearranged them because I wanted them to be um, in descending order. Started with the term with the biggest exponent, worked my way down. My a value is a 5, my b value is a 3, and my c value is a negative 2. So let's say that the sum is going to be negative 3 fifths. Let's say that the product is going to be negative 2 fifths. Last but not least, let's say I'm going to add x squared from the right to the left side. So I got positive x squared plus 6x minus 5 equals 0. A value is 1, B value is 6, and the C value is negative 5. So let's say that the sum, negate the B, divide by A, get negative 6. Product, C value divided by A, simply negative 5. So I hope we're feeling pretty strong and we're ready to move on and try a few more uh, tricks. Okay, so we got a multiple choice question here. They want me to find a quadratic equation whose uh, roots have a sum of 5 and a product of negative 3. So as soon as they said sum of 5, I said negative b divided by a has to turn out to be 5. And then as soon as they said product, I said c divided by a has to turn out to be negative 3 as a result. So I'm going to work through these. I mean, you know what? I'm not going to be too crazy here. I'm just going to take number one. I'm going to work it out. I'm going to say, all right, if I negate his B value and I divide by his A value, do I get the answer that I want? Does it match this guy up here? And I would say no. So I'm not even going to worry about the product. I already know one's a dead duck. Okay, I've got to switch colors here perhaps. All right, let's grab the blue. Let's go try number two. All right, so let's negate their B value. Now, their B value is already negative 5, so if I negate it, I get a positive 5 divided by the A value. I get a 5. I'll tell you what, I'm feeling good. I got a good match so far. Let's try product. 
I should have said sum there. So let's try product. I'm going to take the C value, which is negative 3, divided by the A value. Does it match? Yes, we got another match. So I'm thinking winner, winner, chicken dinner. Right there. I like number 2. All right, we're going to get a little more sophisticated here, and I'd like to uh, show you a few tricks here. The first thing that I said to myself when they gave me these roots was I kind of peeled them apart. I said the first root, x sub 1, is really 5 plus radical 7. And the second root, x sub 2. And I want you to use the same notation that I'm using, and I want you to be very careful with your subscripts. If you're nice and neat, uh, you know, your 1 is little, your 2 is little. It's, you know, kind of below ground level, so to speak. And so now what I want you to do is I want you to find the sum. I want to know what is x sub 1 plus x sub 2. So I've got, you know, 5 plus radical 7 plus the other root, which is 5 minus radical 7. If I combine like terms, 5 plus 5 is 10, and something cool happens, the radicals cancel out. So the sum is simply 10. So let's go through. Are there any choices that we could eliminate just by knowing the sum? So I'm going to start with the first choice. If I did negative b divided by a, do you like what you get? I do. So one still in contention. Negative b divided by a, no good. Negative b divided by a, no good. Negative b divided by a, no good. So right off the bat, I've already decided that number one has to be my winner. Now I do want to verify the product here, guys, just for practice, because it's very unusual that we could eliminate all the choices x sub 1 times x sub 2. And they are conjugates of one another. And that is a guarantee. that If the roots are irrational, they are guaranteed to be conjugates of one another. So I'm going to go uh, first and last, Florida style. 25 minus 7, which gives me good old 18. And you do see if you take c here and you divide it by a, you get 18. That's good. All right, here's a big rule I need you to get in your notebook. So very important rule. This will pay off numerous times throughout the year. Now, if the roots are irrational, okay, and anytime I say the word irrational, I want you to think of radicals, okay? All radicals are irrational, unless, of course, it's a, there's a perfect square sitting underneath it. Okay, so if, it's, if the number is fully simplified, there's still a radical in it, then it is irrational. Now, if, they're, if the roots are irrational, they are guaranteed to be what? They are guaranteed to be conjugates of one another. So, for instance, if I told you that the first root was 3 minus radical 2, then you instantly, automatically know that the other root is guaranteed to be 3 plus radical 2. Done deal. Guaranteed every single time. All right, this next question is a little more thought-provoking, and there's actually an infinite number of answers. Um, and I'm going to sh hopefully show you why there's an infinite number. But um, they did say we want to write two different quadratic equations that have uh, a sum of 9 and a product of 6 for the roots. So as soon as they said sum, I knew that negative b divided by a has to equal 9. And I know that for product, c divided by a has to equal 6. That's my first thought. So the first thing I'm going to do for case number 1, I'm going to say, you know what? Let's let a equal 1, just to make life simpler. So negative b divided by 1 has to equal 9. Therefore, b equals negative 9. Or c divided by 1 equals 6. Therefore, c equals 6. So if I put it all together, and I know that the standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, then I know that 1x squared minus 9x plus 6 is an equation that satisfies the sum and the product that was desired. Now for case number 2, and I'm going to give you the freedom, I mean, now you could let a equal anything you want it to be. I'm going to keep it simple, so I'm just going to let a equal 2. So I'm a little boring, but it'll get the job done. So we know that negative b divided by 2 has to equal 9. Therefore, by the time I cross multiply and negate, I got negative 18. And we know that C divided by A has got to be 6. Whoops, plug your 2 in. Plug your 2 in. There you go, Hill. All right, so C has got to be 12. So let's put it all together. I know, and I said A is 2, so I'm going to say 2x squared minus 18x plus 12 equals 0. 
So there's just two examples, and that's all they asked for was two examples. But I hope I've convinced you, you can start off by letting A equal anything you want. If you are really courageous, you could let A equal, you know, um, you know, 123 if you wanted to. You know, and then you could build your B and your C value off of that and develop a, an equivalent equation to mine. Here's another interesting one. Um, they came right out and they said, we want the leading coefficient to be 3. Now, the leading coefficient, by definition, is your A value. They are telling you we want A to be 3. So here's what I got cooking. Um, I also want to kind of peel these roots apart, so to speak. So I'm going to say, well, the first root is 4 plus radical 3. I know that the second root, x sub 2, is 4 minus radical 3. All right. So the sum of those two roots... If I combine like terms, I'm going to get 8 because, uh, you know, 4 plus 4 is 8, but the uh, positive radical 3 and the negative radical 3 cancel out. Now, for the product, I know that they're conjugates. That's a good thing. So first times first minus last times last gives me 13 by the time I go Florida style. So here's what I know. I know that negative B divided by A has to equal 8. And they already determined for me that they wanted A to be 3. That wasn't my choice this time. Um, so I'm going to say, well, negative B divided by 3 has to be 8. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. And then I'm going to divide by negative 1. So B really equals negative 24. All right, next one up. I know that C divided by A has got to be 13. And they already said A is 3. So I'm going to cross multiply and I'm going to get C equals 39. So let's put it all together. We know that A's got to be 3. So let's go 3x squared. We know that B's got to be negative 24, and we know that C's got to be 39. Now, the only thing is that don't get sloppy. Don't forget about the X that goes in the middle. You know, don't forget about your X squared, and you're ready to rock and roll from there. All right, this last problem I want to throw out there, and I'm going to kind of get you started, uh, but I'm going to let you guys finish it on your own tonight. So this will be one of the things that we come around, and this will be 50% uh, of your, uh, the grade that you receive for your notebook tomorrow. Uh, will be our ability to attempt and you know be as accurate as possible on this question. But they said they wanted the y-intercept to be negative 2, and that's a new wrinkle that we haven't seen. So I'm going to tell you right now that the y-intercept is the same as the value of c. So they're telling you we want the c value to be negative 2. So I want you to use that. Also keep in mind they gave you the two roots. We know that x sub 1 has got to be 3 plus radical 10. We know that x sub 2 has got to be 3 minus radical 10. And, and also keep in mind, you know that the c value has got to be negative 2. So I want you to be courageous. I want you to try this one on your own. And that will give us a great um, point to start our discussions tomorrow to see how we felt on this very challenging question.